the broadcast this is uh, blog number 13 and it's uh, September 17th 2019 I'm uh, Dan Frank the author of T wall and uh, the books T wall in one week and we're on um, you can reach us on twall.com or or on uh, Armageddon Armageddon desk dot com I think it's easier to go to T wall it'll take you the same place um, I'm going to make this image bigger uh, for just a second here. This is, um, we're, we're talking today about angels and families, uh, their families, potential families, uh, as suggested by the Word of God, uh, which is a really off-the-wall subject. I, I thought we would be done with this thing but uh, you know this this is the way I work you know I go to Starbucks every morning I take my iPad and I sit there and I read the word and and whatever leaps off the page at me I copy it and post it in an email and I collect those as I'm reading and at the end of the session I send them to myself as an email and I get back here at my desk and I'm ready to either write or make these videos and of late we've been making this video and we made made one uh, yesterday on uh, Sean Carroll here as he was uh, put coming forth in this uh, in this new book uh, and it's about uh, something deeply hidden a physical parallel in faith is what I his new book is, is something deeply hidden uh, but uh, anyway you know, I haven't listened to this video yet, and, and, you know, he says, God is not a good theory. And, you know, that's fine. He's a physicist, and I really wouldn't expect him to be an expert on God any more than I would expect me to be an expert on physics. In fact, I just, you know, the slide rule is uh, is was Greek to me, you know. I, and uh, I would, I, I'm just... I just barely scratch, scratch the surface on physics, and I rely on uh, people like Sean Carroll here to, you know, give me just the glimmest in insights, you know. But I'm going to listen to this later tonight. Hopefully, he treats us uh, reasonably well. He may not, you know. Uh, but you know, their work that the uh, physicist is doing as, as we've been stipulating here is, is taking us over and and meshing with what God is talking about and we're speaking specifically about the Copenhagen interpretation which is and uh, where the Niles Bohr they basically slid the slid the lid off of uh, Pandora's box with quantum theory which is great it runs all our devices and everything it's been a um, a wonderful advancement for us, but then they kind of slid the lid back on Pandora's box and shoved quantum theory back in there and said, hey, you know, here, here's the Copenhagen interpretation, as whereas quantum theory reveals that when we fire one electron through a, a double slit panel and, and it materializes on the back wall, not as one or two, you know, going through the slits, but as an interference pattern, so we have many potential realities for where that electron is, is landing. And what the Copenhagen interpretation verse basically said, this was in 1927, was that all those collapse into the one that's apparent when we observe. And the, <laughs> the thing of it is, when or where or were you to, to observe, actually makes a difference as to which where that electron would be it's not in any specific place and if you don't deserve if you don't make that observation of where did the electron land then it's not really anywhere at all it's in a bunch of places at once and mathematically best we can do is come up with a probability for where it was and and uh, the copenhagen uh interpretation really just dismissed everything that didn't that wasn't captured or wasn't resident in the one location where we made the observation. 
It just dismissed all those others. And uh, Sean Carroll is, is saying, hey, we, you know, that was 1927. We have better tools. We need to go on and take this a little further, kind of shove that lid back off of Pandora's box and get find out more about quantum you know quantum mechanics and get to some resolution about what happened with all those potential realities uh, you know and, and what he's really driving at is do they get um, do they material actually instead of done away with or collapsing into uh, the uh, reality we observe are they potentially continuing in another reality in a theory that's called the many worlds theory and you know so that's what he's all about and faith actually folds into that and I, I we're here in Ephesians 310 and I got started in the, with this verse oh maybe a dozen years ago uh, God brought this to my attention and 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 here again today we were back at it uh, can I set one thing here that may may help us as we're pursuing this 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 is what I came back with today you know if you want to get a screenshot I'll, I'll get it for you you know uh, the first verse is, is really different I've been reading in John so up here John 21 25 that's the last verse in John but I made a suggestion there and then I'm on today God told me to read Ephesians again so if you want to take a snapshot of that, you know, uh, I'll give you just a second to do that or screenshot. Um, and it's John 21, 25, Ephesians 2, 7 through 10, Ephesians 3, 8 through 11, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. And some notes of mine. Uh, and there's the bottom of that, you know, and going on to Ephesians uh, 2, 6 through 7. Uh, and some more notes of mine and then 1 Corinthians 3 uh, 19 through 21 uh, which we covered yesterday amen praise God uh, but let's just go back I just want to grab this first one because it was at the end of my reading in John today and this is 21 25 now there all are also many other things that Jesus did were every one of them to be written I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Now, this is by Paul, and I'll just give you my note here. Could Jesus, uh, it's not Jesus, it's Paul, Paul be alluding to all those collapsed worlds suggested or omitted by the Copenhagen interpretation? That's a question. This is alluding principally to those miracles, you know, this is what Paul is alluding to, those, to those miracles principally performed after he, Jesus, rose from the grave and before he ascended to heaven. Now, it could be that Paul is referring to all the miracles um, that Jesus did in his lifetime, but, you know, the way the text is worded, wherever where now, there are also many other things that Jesus did. But, you know, that comes on the, on the tail of just what Jesus did during that block of 40 or so days in which he, would, he had rose from the grave and proceeding where he went into heaven, as we've been talking about, and went, and went and preached or taught to imprisoned spirits, which has <laughs> been about the topic for the last 11 or 12 um, of these uh, issues and I should point out you know I'm excited about either way my first inclination that the the from first Peter 3 uh, 18 through 20 is that those are angels that the imprisoned spirits are angels and I come at that from a couple of ways but if you know if you go back and listen to block number 11 I'm kind of excited that they could be men because that would give us a verification of men that are 2,300 years old. And I, and I think that has a potential plus for many people in the body of Christ just to see that evidence. Amen. Praise God. But, you know, I th think what we really need to go back to is that they could be all five of those things mentioned in, uh, I think it's uh, the le number 11 or number 12 blog. This is the number 13. Uh but 
let's go on with this because you know that this is just my question here John 21 25 when he's talking about all these miracles and he's and this is Paul he says I suppose the world itself could not contain the books that could be written. Now, maybe he's just exaggerating. You know, it's, it's hard to put too much weight on that. But maybe he's being literal. And if he is being literal, and I found the Bible is so often quite literal, then he could be talking about not only the things that, did, that Jesus did in this reality, but in all the other potential many worlds realities that are suggested by modern science and and let me just take a step back one of the ways that you know scientists are saying like you know at least two-thirds to three-quarters of what's out there we don't know about is they they measure the forces the gravity and the electromagnetic force they got four forces they measure and one, I think it's gravity, it's out of sync with the others. So what they're suggesting is that because it's so out of sync, uh, and, and you have to go pursue them, like I said, I know so little about physics, but I, I listen to them and I get the gist of what they're saying, and so will you. You may not go away with the particulars, but uh, uh, what they're saying is these forces are so out of sync, suggesting that there is more material more matter in the universe that we're seeing it and interestingly enough that concept of dark matter traces back to a preacher i think in the 16th century who came i think on the heels of uh, isaac newton and after isaac newton that a lot of the ideas kind of laid dead for a while and this preacher he was a mathematician also he picked it up can't remember his name but he started writing about it and he kind of postulated some of the early concepts that eventually led to this concept of dark matter you know which makes up you know two thirds to three quarters of the universe and and what i am suggesting here is that uh no this this ain't paul here talking this is john we, we think it's john this was from the book of john now these are many of the things that Jesus did. He he and they, you know the the world could not contain the books that would be written if we were to write them all down. And, and as, we're assuming that he's just talking about that little block of time between when he rose from the grave and when he ascended. And if so, then he could be talking also about all the works that Jesus did in the other domains, dimensions, uh, if you want to look at string theory or the many worlds theory, the multiverse, you know, a lot of common theories allude to the same thing. And, and Jesus, he, he could be alluding to all the probabilities that the Copenhagen interpretation collapses into one observable point. That's just from John. But let's go on here. Today, my actual reading, I, I finished up something in John and went, or directed me back to Ephesians, which he so often does. And uh, here, here I started running into something. Let's just jump in here because I know we're running out of time. Yeah, we're 13 minutes already. So that in the coming age, he might show the imme immeasurable riches of his grace. Now, I, I want to make a point here. This is John, uh, no, it's Ephesians 2, uh, verse seven, uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 7. And he is, the, the purpose of redemption in Christ and Jews and Gentiles being united in this mystery that he talks about throughout these passages here in um, Ephesians uh, throughout the whole book salvation and the and even the mystery being revealed and Jews and Gentiles being united in Christ in heaven that is not the end in itself that that is just part of the mechanics of it and it and it's a pretty important part because you know it it it's where Jesus is connected to the whole thing so he's like the heartbeat of it but 
that it was that wasn't the end of it that wasn't the purpose of it and here in in verse 2 or chapter 2 of Ephesians verse 7 he's he's stating so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace toward us in Christ that is where he's going not just redemption in Christ redemption in Christ is the stepping stone to get to that but it's not the end game amen praise god it's not the end game and 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 this is not your own doing it is the gift of god not a result of works so that no one may boast for we are his workmanship created in good works for in christ jesus for good works this is ephesians 2 10 which god prepared beforehand that we should walk in them and you know this was you know the word is saying, I believe this is Paul. He's saying here that you know uh, that we are we're not our own self. We're His workmanship, and we've been created in Christ Jesus unto good works. And this w occurred before the earth was that we should walk in them. And the point I want to make here is that we don't only walk in them in this reality, but in the next. And if the uh, uh, many worlds people are right in their theory, we we walk in good works in all those realities. Um, don't get just too hung up on this reality because uh, it, it, you know it was just the methodology, you know, not to diminish Jesus. I mean, he made it all happen, but. Even Jesus moving us out of this earth and out of this earth and and condemning sin with His own blood, and 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 giving us a victory in Christ that we would be united with Him, we and Jews and and and, and in the Spirit in Jesus, uh, that is just the beginning. the The real abundance. The riches of his grace, as it says up here in verse 7, the riches of his grace, that isn't until future worlds. And, and, and we, as we've discussed in, already in this blog, you know, at one point God, God talks about, I think it's in the book of Hebrews, I'm not sure, don't quote me exactly, but he, it might be Hebrews 1, but he talks about rolling up this whole reality that we see like it was a garment. And, uh, and, My point here is that, you know, this good works which God prepared before and that we should walk in them should also suggest that we're going to walk in good works in in these in major in the ages to come, in the ages to come, and that's part of the immeasurable riches of His grace. Okay, verses three to eleven. To me, eighteen minutes. Okay. Though I am, this is uh, 8 through 11, Ephesians 3, 8 through 11. To me, though I am very, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light to everyone what was the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might, may, might be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus, you know. And, and as I said, you know, this is a big thing here. This, he, 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 I'm going to go on forward and then we're going to come back to 310 because I got a, a, a little more. To, but this is where I started several years ago with, with, with verse 310. So that we, through the, the church, and the and the and if you look those words up there in the original languages, it means like via the church. And it, and it means literally, nobody likes to use this word because it's, it's reminiscent of witchcraft. But... But the word, the terminology is really that we would channel. And, and you know, people jump to this thing of a seance, you know, you're, you're getting off of Ouija boards. No, I think it, we're, the, the word channel is, is being used like the deep part of a river. 
Amen. Praise God. That that's what we're to uh, that we're to make known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places, which still boggles my mind. That you know there are rulers and authorities in heavenly places that may be rogue, but they're uh, and they're still in need of the deep knowledge, the the channeled knowledge of you know I, I live not far from the river, the Mississippi River here right where the Illinois, the Missouri, and the uh, uh, Mississippi all come together. And there's a channel out there in the river that's about, to, I think, nine or nine to 12 foot deep. I think it's like 12 foot deep they try to keep it at. And that's where the bulk of the water of the river comes through. And that's, it's, this is not channeling as in, as in moving something to the spiritual world, but we're channeling as to get the deep part of the wisdom of God. Let's move on. We're going to come back to that in another way here. Um, Ephesians 3 14 through 21 and I, I'm just going to read you what I got today you're going to form your own opinions I, I'm not stating that anything that I'm suggesting is true what I'm suggesting is that we need to explore these ideas and and find out what you know we can relate to and what what has possible uh, outcomes to it you know and what holds promise and what doesn't much like a theoretical physics would, a physicist would do. You know, kind of the same thing going on here. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father. This is Paul. For whom, for, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Oh, hallelujah. I just stumbled upon this today. And, and it, it could be just a... A slip of the of the, of the verbiage here, but he's talking about every family in heaven. He he would be talking uh, in Porsche about angels. Now we know angels as a rule, not as a rule, but I mean always angels are what we I think they call that being asexual. I mean they 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 I, I might have misquoted that, but anyway, angels do not reproduce. Angels are male only. They're always referred to in the male form, and they do not rebuke, reproduce. And and but you know it's almost suggesting here in Ephesians three fourteen that angels have a family, and so you know I would like to go back and we look at that many worlds concepts or are you know the 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 uh, probabilities that are eliminated in uh, the Copenhagen interpretation and and suggest that m maybe the w reason angels uh, do not reproduce is that they have families in all those different worlds that many worlds refers to or the Copenhagen the Copenhagen interpretation rejects. Let's just go on here. Uh, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have the strength to comprehend with all. This is Paul's prayer. That you may be rooted and grounded in love may have the strength to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with the fullness of God. And, you know. You have to realize there that he's you're going to have to get beyond knowledge through love to get to the fullness of God. Knowledge alone, you know, the the height, breadth, depth, you know, it's not going to get you there. You know, uh, there there is a fullness of God, and it's beyond knowledge. And I, I think that tinges over into what we talked about in blog twelve. Whether well, there might be five or six interpretations of Ephesians three, uh, no, 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 it's not Ephesians three. Uh, what is it? I guess I could turn the page. First Peter three, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. There might be five interpretations of that, but in love, we should probably consider that everyone who has an interpretation of that might be right, at least for them. You know. And there's scripture for that. Now, to him is able to do far more, uh, uh, more abundantly than we can ask or think, according to the power that worketh within him. To him be all glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. And there, there again, he's testifying that 
in Christ, we're being blessed, not in just this time, but throughout all generations, and probably not just human families, which are created biologically, but there could as well be angelic families who just exist in other realms and other domains. Uh, here's kind of the notes I threw down on every family is named. There are families in heaven, even angelic families, despite the fact that angels are asexual and, and do not reproduce. Uh, I don't know about that term, asexual, exactly what it means. I think it means does not reproduce, but don't quote me on that. And, and really, that should be a question. You know, uh, will it let me go over there? Yeah, I might. I'm, I'm raising that as a question because I, I think it almost says that. Could it be that all those collapsed, collapsed, oh, here's Gus, collapsed realities and probabilities abandoned in the Copenhagen interpretation, could all those in, implied many worlds constitute the realm in which angelic families might materialize? The, the, Probably this is why angels don't reproduce. You know, I, I, there's a reason for many things, and uh, you know, like in the new heavens and the new earth, there's no sea, there's no oceans, and uh, and and one of the reasons for that, they've been admitted in the new recreated earth, according to Revelations, I think it's 20, uh, chapter 20 or so, and one of the reasons for that. There's there's no sun. There's no scorching heat source. You know, it, it is God's presence that illuminates um, from within us everywhere we go. You might say there's no night either. You know, well, one of the reasons we have the oceans was to move heat away from the equator. If you if you have a sun or a scorching heat source on the equator then that that creates an uninhabitable zone you know so that's what uh, you know that's what those storms and the hurricanes i know we curse them at times but they exist to move that heat off of the equator otherwise all those fish out there in that equatorial regions would die and so you know in 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 the recreated earth since we don't have a scorching heat source or our sun we also don't have oceans amen praise god thus uh could it be that those collapsed realities or probabilities abandoned in the Copenhagen Tertian could all those implied many worlds constitute, constitute angelic families? Possibly this is why angels don't reproduce. Thus, he, here we have offspring, in other words, on this earth, but in heaven, angels have families that pop up in all the alternative worlds prompted by the uh, our many choices in the many worlds theory if you uh, subscribe to that uh, keep foremost in our thoughts Ephesians 2 6 and 7 and he raised up with him and seated us with him in, he in heavenly places in Christ Jesus so it's not about this earth it's not about this time is it so that in the coming ages, amen, coming ages, amen, praise God. Oh, my, that was a mistake. <laughs> uh, Got to get something lighter. Coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches, amen, praise God, immeasurable. That's, that's suggesting along these many worlds line that they... You know, as we went, if you go all the way back up here to the beginning where we were talking about, it was written, I suppose that the world could not contain the books that would be written describing the Jesus miracles. The suggestion here is that only applies to like 40 days. Amen. Praise God. That That's a lot. That's, that's leaving the door open that Jesus was doing miracles in those other realms. Well, what have I written here? Let's let's line this up. Raising us up in a, uh, so that the Lord G uh, Jews and Gentiles seated in Christ in how many places was not an end in itself. We are seated with Christ apart from our sins so that in the ages, plural, to come, God might reveal the immeasurable rich riches of his grace facilitated by Christ. We are his workmanship, Ephesians 2.10, we created in Christ Jesus to good works that we should walk in him 
this Jesus proposed proposed before the world was and in combination with Ephesians 2 7 we are prompted to assume that the real staggering awareness of his grace and riches raising for redemption is only apparent in those future ages in which heavenly angels angels already rejoice in their families amen the lord knows that this is uh, from yesterday really but it is applicable still the lord knows the thoughts of the wise that they are futile so that no one boasts uh, in men for all things are yours many worlds again paul and apollos uh, say if it's in the world the world life and death or present or future all are yours for first corinthians 3 1 9 we are so out of time but this is uh, my olive tree software and uh in response to 310 here's some notes from uh the whole our hosts of heaven are better able to glorify god when they behold wonder that god has done and doesn't creating the church you know that's that's uh, not too strong but uh this is dakes and dakes kind of passed out of uh, uh, favor here a few years ago over some lit legal issues i think he did some stupid stuff and right near here actually in east st louis illinois which i'm like 10 miles from there uh, but anyway, this is Dake's notes on 210. To the intent that now the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known to the church of manifold wisdom of God. God is making, these are Dake's notes, by the way. God is making Jews and Gentiles one new body demonstrate to the principalities and powers in heavenly places the manifold wisdom of God or eternal purpose of God. Heavenly places might be known. Uh, it gives you, a, yeah, you could get in there by the church the manifold by this by the submission of the church to god and christ by the manifold wisdom of god to the church both angels and demonic powers are being taught the eternal purpose of god in paul's writing alone do we find the doctrine position unity walk and destiny uh that's 11. I wanted to go down. I found something here in, I think it's 14, I want, I want to say. Bow my knees to the Father of our Lord. Some willingly do this, but all will be forced to do it in due time. I might have wanted to do it. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my trillion, which is your glory. Do not be disgraced by my sufferings for you. They are honorable for you and enable uh, you to pers persevere in righteousness. That's not exactly the whole family of God. I bet that's right here where I'm at. The word family. This is uh, Dake's notes on family from uh, 15. Verse 15, which would be for this reason. Or thought. Family down here every family in heaven and earth okay so this is uh dake's notes on family the word family applies to all free moral offspring of god whether by direct creation begatting or adoption past present and future it includes all principalities powers dominions, both earthly and heavenly human and angelic fresh and flesh and spirit and unfallen and fallen redeemed angels uh, to limit the family to the church as many do and to interpret the passage in connection with the New Testament Corinthians is unscriptural Dick's opinion in the spirit uh, would there be also uh, cherubim sephirim uh, archangels common angels referred to human spirits and and living creatures of various kinds see the spirit world in the flesh where there are jews and gentiles some in heaven some on earth who with the spirit being and and the spirits of re, of the redeemed men in heaven make up the whole family of god and on earth uh, 
doesn't really speak specifically to what I'm suggesting here, but this the suggesting that I was making was way over here from Ephesians 3 14. Well, it was from right there. Uh, for this reason, I bow my knees to the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. And I, I just, you know, inconsistent with what we've been looking at, suggesting that every family in heaven is probably not a misprint, but they're, the angels very possibly, if the many worlds theory are, is correct, or some variation of it, or string theory, that um, the angels could reproduce by uh, not by having biological reproductions of themselves, but by bringing to life and recognizing and dealing with um, those. I'm, I'm going to say just the, the the discarded probabilities of the Copenhagen interpretation. Angels could have families in those uh without reproducing it's just a suggestion it's an idea worth uh uh exploring amen praise god well boy we're out of time we, i think we broke a record here today it's in our, yesterday i i actually taped this broadcast and i left the air conditioner on so i had to do it again and you know and then in the second one it was only seven seconds difference amazing how that works out Dan, Frank, uh, with Armageddon Desk, I'm going to have to go on the run. Amen. Praise God. Uh, get you this software here, this uh, Olive Tree. It's out of Spokane, Washington. It's pretty good. It's about 40 by 45 bucks. I get the ESV with the ESV Study Bible Notes. I like it. Amen. Dace ain't bad to have either, but Dace, Dace is, uh, he, he fell out of favor here about uh, a decade or two. And, and Dace is Ad, adhorently camped on the idea of gap theory which suggests that there was a, a race of people here before Adam amen and you have to read Dakes for about 10 years before you discover that he the Dakes Bible is the King James Bible but the Dakes notes almost match it amen praise God uh, but it's still available and and sometimes he, he makes some pretty good notations in here and and Interesting enough, uh, it's a great kind of software because I'll show you. Like you, you can zoom in on these, like First Peter, and it'll pop up right down here. See, you you click on First Peter three twenty two, and it it comes up in the bottom left hand corner. Uh, boom! Uh, so you can get all over the Bible pretty fast, you know, which is very helpful. Anyway, Olive Tree is the, is the name of that software. I think I paid about 40 bucks for it, and I have it on everything. Amen. Praise God. This is Dan Dan Frank with T-Wall. Um, big question there. Do, do angels have kids by way of alternative domains, dimensions, uh, the many worlds theory, or the, the rejected probabilities that have collapsed into the observable uh, reality uh, suggested by the Copenhagen interpretation. Amen. Praise God. Big questions. I never even thought of this, that angels could possibly have children, but they could in, in that suggestion. And I only bring that up to kind of make the focus go over there that we are really, you know, the, the real plus, the real immeasurable riches of God are not going to be revealed in this life. It's it's after in the ages to come when when God's going to show us the immeasurable riches of his grace and glory in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Got to go. Got to got to run. Amen. It's Dan Frank, Armageddon Death. Uh we're get out of here. I think we can just click